to see you. Good to see lots of people here to support those who have been baptised. Uh, my name's Simon. Everyone say your name. Harry. Nice to meet you. Um, I just want to explain briefly about baptism, what it is, why we do this. Um, we do it because Jesus commanded us to. In uh, Matthew 28, Jesus said um, to his disciples, go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded. So we just follow that. We say, okay, if we choose to believe that Jesus is who he says he is, we say, I've decided to follow you. I want to follow you for the rest of my days, and I want to obey you, and I want to follow your teaching. And um, uh, I've met with all those who are being baptised, and we've talked about how water is a sign of life. Okay? I can see Claire just taking a sip of water as I say that. If we, if we didn't have any water, we'd all be gone as within this week. Physical life comes through water. And it mentions water in the first verse of the Bible. But it also mentions the Spirit. In the first verse of the Bible, it says, the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. The Spirit was hovering over the water. And there's a theme that runs right through the Bible about water and about the Spirit. And in the Old Testament, the old part of the Bible, before Jesus came, there's loads of predictions about Jesus. Call them prophecies about what he's going to come and do and that he would be the Son of God. He would be the Christ, the Messiah. Okay? And some of those prophecies are spoken by prophets and some of those prophecies are shown in physical ways. And I just want to tell you about one of them, okay? Anybody heard of Moses? You've heard of Moses. Moses was around a thousand years before Jesus. And all of the nation of Israel that he was one of were slaves in Egypt. There was over a million of them who were slaves in Egypt. And um, God called him, God called to him and said, I'm going to use you to set these people free. Okay? And long story short, there's something that happens. Do you want to pop that? Can you pop that with a This is to symbolize blood, okay? Uh, it's, it said that all the Israelites needed to put the blood of a lamb above their doorpost. The blood of a lamb above their doorpost. And it was to save them from death. And the next day, they'd all be saved and they left Egypt because the Pharaoh said, I'm going to let you go now because of what's happened. And they came out of Egypt, okay? So this is me, Moses. I'm going to be Moses. I've got a beard. Um, comes out of Egypt with a million people, which is even more than is here today. And they come to the Red Sea. They come to water. And they are not just wandering to this water. They are led by a pillar of cloud and fire. A pillar of fire and cloud, which speaks of the Spirit. They were led by the Spirit to the water, deliberately. And when they came there, they were then stuck because the Egyptian army then followed them to the Red Sea because the Pharaoh changed his mind. Actually, go get them back. Bring them back to Egypt. But the pillar of fire and cloud moved from the front of the Israelites to the back and protected them. And Moses, God said to him, take your staff, raise it across the water. Get ready. Yeah, I'm not going to do it. Uh, he raised his staff and it said the wind blew all night and the waves, the, the water parted so it was dry land and they passed through the water, which I'm not going to do because I've got my shoes on. Okay, They passed through the Red Sea on dry ground and when they got to the other side, the pillar of fire and cloud came up and the Egyptians went in and drowned. The Israelites were saved into, towards the promised land. They were saved from slavery, from death, into the promised land, into life. Now, I need a volunteer. 
Go on, Louis. Come and hold this for me, Louis. Loads of stuff then happens. Hold that nice and high. Loads of stuff happens in... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it, you got it. Loads of stuff happens in the wilderness, but one thing that happens is they run out of water because they're in a desert. They run out of water. And God says to Moses, strike the rock. And he strikes the rock. And what comes out? Water. Life. They came by the Spirit through the water, ran out of water, and God gave them water. But he carried on leading them by his Spirit. And this, some people think this rock was even the rock was split. It's in Horeb. It's in the place where they were. It looks amazing, doesn't it? But they were given water in the wilderness. Thank you, Louis. Give him a round of applause. Okay. <laughs> Woo! Okay, I need to put my glasses on. I just want to read out one scripture. And it says this. This is in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. It says, For I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors that we've just talked about were all under the cloud and they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all are the same they all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink for they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them. Okay? Oh, actually, and there's one more bit, the spiritual rock that accompanied them and that rock was Christ. Jesus Christ is the rock, is what it says. Jesus is the rock. But also, some of you might know that just before Jesus came, a guy comes along called John. John the baptizer, yeah? John the Baptist. And he was baptizing in the Jordan River. And he he pointed and he said, look, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The blood of the Lamb takes away the sin of the world. And John called Jesus the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He's the one who then leads us by the Spirit of God through the waters of baptism into freedom. It's all right. We should be good now. Into freedom. There you go. That's much better. Into freedom towards what God's plan is for us. So the six people being baptized are being baptized because they've decided to follow Jesus. They've decided that Jesus, who can take away our sin, he washes our sin away. And when Jesus hung on the cross, the Bible says the sins of the world were placed upon him. The punishment I deserve for my wrongdoing was placed upon Jesus. And so baptism doesn't save us. Jesus saves us. Salvation is an inner An inner work that Jesus does by the power of the Holy Spirit on the inside. But we're going to celebrate that today by being obedient and baptizing these guys in water. And as we do that, we're going to pray for new life. We're going to pray for new life, new life of the Spirit. And we're going to pray for them to be filled with the Holy Spirit as they do that. So we're going to hear from each of them now. Okay. And so um, I'm going to have Anna first. Anna, do you want to come up? Anna. This is Anna, everyone. Okay, we're going to put it on the screen so we can see and we'll be able to see when people are in the baptistry. Hello, Anna. Hello, I think now I was going to be the first one. Uh, each of these people just going to tell us their story. We call it their testimony of what God has and is doing in their lives, all right? So you go for it, Anna. <laughs> yeah, can you everyone hear me? Yeah. Oh, cool, okay. Yeah, so my name is Anna. Um, I grew up in East London. Uh, from, I was there for most of my life, really, till I was about 53, and I moved in Hockley in 
2022. Um, and then soon after moving in Hockley, my um, friends Joe and Chris encouraged me to join a community church. Um, unfortunately, they couldn't come here to, you know, couldn't make it to, um, to this evening. But yeah, they encouraged me to come to community church. So, and this is where I've actually, you know, um, been brought here by the um, Life Community Church. Now, before, I only went to church for christenings, Easter time, Christmas time, you know, midnight mass, and that's the only time, really, I did go to church. I I went to church, yeah. So, when I first came to this Life Community Church, I felt so welcomed. You know, it's just a beautiful church. Everyone just makes you feel welcome. You feel really loved. So, I thought I'd continue to, you know, come to this church, because I just loved love being here and love, love being with everyone um, and also I wanted to make friends because you know it was a big thing coming to Hockley um, in, in East London for 53 years so I actually wanted to make friends um, but initially my reason for coming here was, was to make friends that was my initial you know reason but then as I kept on coming, I just felt so stronger to be worshipping the Lord. You know, when I was singing, I just felt something stronger inside of me to continue to come into church. And then as I sort of like carried on also as well, um, I wanted to learn the Bible. So I was blessed by Jocelyn. Um, me and Jocelyn have Bible, Bible sessions every single week, um, which is wonderful. And then through the Bible study, there was a verse. And in that verse, it said, if you want to follow Jesus, be baptised. So, you know, um, through these Bible studies, I'm still continuing with the Bible studies with Jocelyn every single week. And being open and confident when I come to church to, you know, share my, how I'm feeling with all my family here every Sunday, most Sundays that I come. Um, from then, I, I want to follow Jesus. And Jesus died on a cross and he's forgiven our sins and to have a new life. And this is why I'm being baptised today. Come on. Yeah. Thank you so Anna, you know, today you made the most important decision in your life to follow Jesus and to love him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And you know, Jesus, God, too, he's watching and he's happy and he's happy with the angel because you gave your life to him and you are part of his family and of this family. And I wanted to... <laughs> I wanted to give you two verses that really uh, is precious and will be precious to you. I think if you hold that a little bit, I put my glasses because of course I need my glasses too. <laughs> and a verse, the, the verse is... You make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. And another verse, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound to be with uh, with dear Anna and to share your goodness, your love and what you did for her on the cross that you died to give her freedom to forgive all her sins and to give her eternal life and Lord I know that you are watching and Lord you will continue to be with her, to never leave her never forsake her and to help her Lord 
to work with you in in the difficulty in the problems you will be always there and she can call on your name and you will help her lord and i just pray that she will continue to stay close to you and to love you and to trust you in everything and in every circumstances bless her be gracious to her in jesus precious name amen Excellent. Well done, Anna. You, you can go and sit down for a minute. Any words that you have for any of these people, any encouragements, please write them down and give them to them um, in the, uh, today or in the next few days. Because, um, yeah, we want to encourage them. We want to bless them. We want to um, listen to God and see what you're saying for them. Um, so I think Ellie is next. Ellie, here at the back. Come on. Okay, so you got something to read out. Ellie's not into public speaking, but look at her standing here so confidently. Okay, Lisa's going to read it. You came up with something. Yeah. Yes. Are you worried? No. I knew you'd be fine. Okay. The first time I picked up a Bible was given one to me from school, a tiny red New Testament. I was about twelve, thirteen. And I would read it before bed every night and then sleep with it under my pillow. Back then, I didn't really know why I was reading it. It just felt like the right thing to do. I slowly slipped out of the habit, always with two questions in my head. Is God real and did Jesus die for our sins? As time went on, I got into new age practices, crystals, sage sticks, yoga and tarot cards. It feels like forever ago and I was doing these things, yet in the grand scheme of things, this really wasn't long ago at all. I won't go into too much detail as I think most people know what those things involve. But looking back and reflecting on everything those practices teach you, Um, is that everything is very me, me, me. How does this make me feel and putting yourself before others? When really it should be God, others and then self. You might think, what about me? But isn't that the point? God will take care of you. God wants to take care of you in every area of your life, whether you are open to it yet or not. I recently asked God for a sign, a sign that would make all the more certain that God is there. Something that isn't so obscure, like a sack of flour falling from the sky, but something that isn't too common also. So I was in my car and thought to myself, if you are truly there, the next car that goes past will be a red car. (laughs) No cars came past for quite some time and then at the end of the road in the distance was a little red car. Doubtful thinking it was just a coincidence, I asked again, Lord, if you're there, show me. The next car that goes past will be blue. About five blue cars in a row drove past me. (laughs) Almost to say, do you believe now? And it's not just things that we ask for that are far-fetched, that shows the presence of the Lord. It's the things that go unnoticed every day. Seeing God in every single thing that we do, hear, think or see. The breath in our lungs when we wake in the morning. The sunlight through the trees and the waves in the ocean. How can something so beautiful just be? There must be a creator. Of course there's a creator. And I feel like my eyes have truly been opened these past couple of years. Although I don't have a life-changing story in why I want to devote my life to Jesus, I think it's important to acknowledge, to know that sometimes that's the point. We have to show up, trust, and know that he's there every step of the way. My ears are open and my mind is open to the voice of God. 
laying down all my sin, big or small, before the Lord and awakening into a new breath of life, knowing that he forgives us always. There's a couple of lines in a worship song that has come to be my favourites and I wanted to end with. Bring all your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting there with open arms. We had a conversation this morning and you were like, I haven't, got, I haven't got anything. I just want to say that beautifully and so well written down. It's absolutely beautiful. And um, I, knew there was, I knew she'd be fine because we met with Ellie this week and it was just beautiful to, to see her and Freddie and um, to just share what God's been doing, uh, for her to share with us what God's been doing. And um, I felt the verse Romans 15, uh, 13, it says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit and um, I just felt as I was praying for you like what you said to me about that little testament that you new testament that you got and how you treasured it so much like reading it and and stuff and I just felt like at that point you didn't realize that like it's God's story but also that you have a part in it and uh, as I was praying for you, I just felt like, um, yeah, it's just a, a powerful part. It's not an insignificant part. And I think, um, you know, like, like you were saying in there, like you may feel like your testimony is not, small, like not a big thing. It's not, we often think we've got to have this massive tale. But what God's done in you is amazing. And I think, um, yeah, it's just going to be powerful because you're going to relate to people who have been where you've been and done the things that you have. And um, through the Holy Spirit in you, you're going to see them um, just seeing Jesus shine out of you the hope and the joy and the peace that he gives you. So uh, is that all right? We get, should we pray? Yeah. Yeah, just, just all put our hands out. If you're a Christian here, if you just... Um, Ellie's like really new to this. She came to church first time three weeks ago. Um, but God's been working for a couple of years, you know. So yeah, Lord, we just thank you for Ellie. Thank you for her. Lord, thank you for, for, for Jordan as well. Thank you for, for Fred. Thank you that you're, you're with them, Lord, that you're working in their lives. And we just pray it would continue, continue in Jesus' name. Yeah, pray that you'd reveal more of your character and nature to Ellie, Lord, more of who you are, more joy in your presence, more revelation of Jesus, a close relationship with you and intimacy with you we pray for. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Excellent. Round of applause. Well done. Okay, Tristan. Come on, Tristan. Okay, give me a round of applause. <laughs> well done, Luke. Okay. This is Tristan, everyone. Let's say hello. Okay. Tristan, oh, you got a, you got a bit. I, I'll hold the mic for you. you. You go for it. You don't need glasses, do you? No. Don't step back. <laughs> Here we go. Hello. My, my, my name's Tristan, and I am one of many bunces in this church. Uh, when thinking of a testimony, it, I, it was, I found it quite difficult because I don't have a lot of life experience yet. But growing up with four siblings has been character building to say the least <laughs> giving me strong opinions on various tasks and just things in general as Gary knows I don't know where he is I can't see him there you go uh, I know I love good discussions and uh, debates uh, on Monday nights at Fusion um, and I've been able to form uh, a solid foundation in my faiths and belief uh, during those Mondays oh. Being surrounded by Christian friends at church and receiving great teachings from the youth leaders uh, has given me a strong start in my journey as a Christian, helping me grow into the person I am today. Limitless this year has also played a significant role in this growth, especially this year. Uh, being around fellow believers in God 
it has definitely strengthened my faith even more. I feel that being baptised is important to me because, as Simon states, it is a choice to become a follower of God rather than just a believer. I understand that this is just the beginning of my spiritual journey and I'm excited to see what God has planned for me. Brilliant. Just to say, uh, Limitless is a youth festival. Um, give me a woo if you went to Limitless this year. There are. Um, and um, you, did you go forward at Limitless? No. Not this year. You didn't. But you're, you're here now. <laughs> okay. But he's up now. Okay, Gary. Well, Tristan, I'd like to just second some of the stuff that you've already said. You know, it's actually been an absolute privilege to be a, a part of and to witness what God has been doing in and through your life over the last number of years. Um, I shared this with you at Limitless, and, uh, and I'll, I'll share it again for the sake of everyone here. My goodness, there's a lot of people here. Um, you know, I said to you, do you remember, I said, I said, you've grown up a lot. You know, physically, you're a good-looking, strapping young man. <laughs> You know, you're, you're framed out a lot. I'm quite jealous of your physique, you know, skinny little bunker here. But, uh, you know, you, you know, you're a great size, you're a great white weight, you look good. And, and you know, you, you've filled out and there's some changes that has happened physically. And, and I remember saying to you, you know, God has changed you internally. God's building you, God's strengthening you, God's encouraging you, He's growing you um, in ways that you are unaware of, as well as ways that you are aware of. Um, and I want to just remind you of that, because um, he hasn't stopped, um, and he's got some great and amazing things. So I'm glad, it's is, it is wonderful to hear your story of how this is the start and the beginning, because uh, it really is. There's so much, there's so much ahead of you. Um, just as I was thinking about you, I, was, um, I came up, a verse that popped to mind. It's a very popular verse, a very well-known verse, um, but one I felt for you, for the future as much as now. It says, have I not commanded you, Tristan? doesn't say that bit. I said that bit. It says, be, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And so I just want to remind you that there's going to be times where you step into things that you've not stepped into before. You may have stepped into things that maybe the rest of your family haven't stepped into, and you're out of your comfort zone. But I want you to remember that he is with you everywhere you go. And so I encourage you to just follow his leading, trust in him, and you will see amazing things. So let's just pray. Father God, I just thank you for Tristan. I just thank you for this amazing journey. I thank you again that this is merely the start. Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, would you have your way in Tristan? Father, we give you the glory of what you have done in his life. Amen. Thank you. Well done. Okay. Okay, this is Luai. 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 What's on your t shirt? Straight out of the water. Baptized and highly prized. Come on. So, Luai's Lu my next door neighbour. So, uh, or am I your next door neighbour? Let's say it that way. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, do you want to go for it and we'll... Uh... Okay. Hi, my name is Luai. I've been going to church for three years now and some of you may know that I went to Limitless for the first time this year and that's where I gave my life to Jesus. When I used to come to church, God was speaking to me, but I didn't know what that was feeling, what I was feeling uh, was back then. I just felt weird and I finally had an encounter with him in one of the meetings at Limitless. And it's not something that you hear, it's something that you feel inside when you feel the presence of the Lord. And since that day, when I went up and gave my life to Jesus, my life has been a whole lot better and easier. Um, like My mental health has got better and I've felt uh, more happy and I've been a lot more softer and kinder. And I want to be baptised today to give my gratitude to Jesus and to take my faith to the next step further. Come on! Thank you. I cannot tell you, Luai, how glad and proud our hearts are to see you standing here today. 
like genuinely it has been a journey hasn't it and it's just been amazing to see you showing up week on week and just God moving in your life and um I just want to say, Gary, I think you stole my notes, actually, <laughs> because um, I think God's speaking about Joshua 1, verse 9, because that's exactly the verse I had for you as well. Pete and I have been praying in these weeks leading up, Luai, and um, this is what we felt God say about you. We felt God say, you are an amazing young man. You are full of life, adventure, fun, kindness, and generosity, and that he has amazingly big plans for you. And, and we really felt that God said, you are a world changer that you are going to step into situations and you are going to speak up for people who have no voice. And that is going to take courage and that is going to take strength of mind because everything in you is not going to want to do that, but God's calling you to that, okay? And we really believe that these years have just been strengthening you and just getting you ready for the challenges ahead. And in Joshua, just as Gary just read, I'd just like to say we've got a key ring with it on, but you know... (laughs) Um, we just want to say, God, God says to you, be strong and courageous, for the Lord your God is with you. And that applies always, everywhere, and forever. Yeah? So we want to pray that for you, Luai. Yeah, thank you, God, for Luai. Thank you that he is genuinely the coolest kid that we know. And Lord, you, you want the cool kids. You want the cool kids to step into difficult situations. Lord, to stand up for the weak, to stand up for the lost and the hurt and the lonely. And we just pray great blessing over his life, Lord, in the years to come. We can't wait to see what you have for him. And we just pray every blessing for him. Amen. Amen. Just to say as well, all the people who have been baptised, we got something from the church for each one. And guess what verse is on yours, Louis? Yeah, Same verse. Okay. Uh, who's next? It's Faith. Faith, come up. Give Faith a round of applause. Now, Faith um, did live really, really close to this building <laughs> up until like two weeks ago. Yeah, you were like walking distance from this building, but she actually travelled a long way to be here today because uh, she's moved away to Malvern on the Welsh borders um, to Bible College. And she's driven back this weekend just to be baptised. So that's commitment. (laughs) Go for it. I've been a part of this church all my life, but it was only a couple of years ago that I started taking, uh, started to take my faith seriously. Um, I always struggled with the question, what do you want to do when you're older? As I never knew, I never understood what that meant. Um, however, it was only until I came across the verse in the Bible, Jeremiah 29:11, For I know the plans uh, declares the Lord, uh, the plans for you declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not forsake you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Since this, I have chosen to be obedient to whatever God is calling me to do, as I know it is always for good. I've started this next chapter in my life studying and I'm so happy and at peace knowing that this is where I belong for this season of my life. Now Jesus is in my heart. I want to get baptised so that everyone around me knows that I am a follower of Jesus. I want to follow Jesus and his example and I'm excited to grow in my new faith and with him by my side. I got, I got the t-shirt. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was actually praying for you. And it's funny, I just, obviously because of your name, I, I came up with 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7, for we live by faith, not by sight. And um, I just looked up what the meaning of faith is in the Bible. And the definition that, that popped up was, in the Bible, faith is defined as trust, confidence, and belief in God. Trust is... Faith is a trust in God that he is reliable and will fulfill his promises. Confidence. Faith is confidence in what is hoped for and assured about what is not seen. Belief. Faith is believing in God and what Christ has done for salvation. Relationship. Faith is the means by which a relationship 
with God is established. The Bible says that faith is a twofold process of trust and action. It also says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And that the word faith appears 458 times in the NIV translation of the Bible. And I just looked at all those things like trust, confidence, belief and relationship and just wanted to pray that over you and to just speak faith over you and for you. So is that right if we just do that? Okay. Yeah, thank you, Jesus, for faith. Yeah, Father, we just pray that in every situation, faith will be able to put her trust in you when she can't see what the answer is or um, what, what's ahead, that she would just be able to trust in you, that she would have confidence and assurance about what she cannot see, belief that you, of what you've done on the cross, that where she goes, you are with her, you have saved her, that you've got her back, and relationship, that she would have a deepened relationship with you every day, that you would just deepen it. And we just pray that faith, um, faith would grow. I love the fact that your mum and dad called you Faith, and that every time we say your name, it's almost like, I just want to declare that we're speaking it over you, Faith, that you will have a faith in Jesus, um, that nothing will rock you, nothing will shake you, because your faith will just be cemented and strong. So we just speak life over faith. We just speak um, faith for faith to see the impossible, to see lives changed around her and to be the woman of God that you have called her to be. In Jesus' name, amen. And last but not least, least uh, Anita. Where is Anita? Here she is. Okay, yeah, give the Anita a round of applause. Okay, yeah, don't go back. <laughs> Have you got something you want to say? Something you want to share? Yeah? Okay, go on then. Hi, everyone. Hallelujah. My name is Anita. It's been two months ago I came to this church. I came here, Carrie, Carrie brought me here, and when I enter this church, I feel like I'm home. So I always pray to God, I want to be baptized, because when I remember, I was baptized when I was in seven years. That time, I don't know what is I mean, going on, but now I know what is, what is going on. I know a way to Jesus, so right now, I just accept to choose to be baptized again. Amen. Amen. First, Anita, I just want to say we are your family. We are your family here. Okay? <laughs> And when, uh, when you first said to me about uh, wanting to be baptised, and I think I nearly crashed the car because it was, it was completely out of the blue. It was, a, it was a lovely surprise to have. But what came to mind was I just had a picture of a butterfly. Now, I just want to explain. I met uh, Anita for the first time in February, and um, we met a toddler group, didn't we? And... Um, the, the lady there, Jackie, if any of you know Jackie, you know you don't mess with Jackie. And Jackie was like, Anita, come and sit here and Kerry will talk to you. And I'm like, hi. <laughs> and you were so shy. It was really hard to get anything out of you at all. And uh, I've just seen you change into almost like a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. Like there's been something that has really blossomed in you and uh, so as I've been praying for you the verse that came to me was 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17 and it says this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person the old life is gone the new life has begun your new life is about to begin yeah as a butterfly and not a caterpillar 
with your new family. Yeah. Let me just pray for you. Yeah, Father. Lord, I just want to thank you for this woman of God that has such a gentle spirit and such a servant heart. Uh, Father, I just pray, Lord, as she steps out of that water, that, Lord, her new life will begin, that she would become a new creation, that the old life would be gone and her new life would begin. Lord, I pray that we would see her uh, flourish uh, b before our eyes, Lord, as, as we get to know her and encourage her and, and just watch her become more and more like you. So, Father, just pray courage over her. Lord, I pray for your love to just wrap its arms around her this evening and that she would know that she is loved and accepted and uh, that, Father, she is in the place that you meant her to be for this time. So, Father, we thank you for her and just pray your blessing on her in Jesus' name. Amen. Excellent. So um, what we're going to do, we're going to baptize people now. We call this believer's baptism. Um, it actually says in the Bible, believe and be baptized. It says repent and be baptized. Anita was saying there about she was seven. She was baptized in Africa years ago. I said to her when we met, I said, do you remember that? She said, not really. <laughs> because she wasn't at this age where she could actually say, I want to follow Jesus. Um, it was somewhere on the borderline, I guess, between infant baptism and believer's baptism. But this, you know, her life is, is afresh now. Um, God is going to take her life in, an, in a new direction, we believe, and we're going to stand with her. Um, but for each of us, I just want us to just think for one minute. You know, the Bible says that all have sinned. Every, every single one of us have fallen short of God's glorious standard. Yeah? And these people being baptized, are just recognizing that. They're just saying yes to that. And so often we resist that. We say, oh, no, 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 because I did that good thing. But good things don't wipe out bad things. They don't. The Bible says that all of us have sinned, all of us fall short. And the only way to get a clean record is to have Jesus' record, because he's the only one who's perfect, the only one who's worthy, the only one who is able to wash away sin what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus and so these people are just believing that they're holding on to Jesus hand saying thank you that you forgive me that you wash me clean that you take me by the hand that you'll lead me in my life you will lead me into your purposes your plans because God's plans are really good for you my plans for me are mixed good, bad, and indifferent. But God's plans are perfect because he made me. He knows me. He knows the future. Yeah, he's above all things. He's made you for a purpose. And so I encourage you to think about that this morning. What, uh, this afternoon, I keep saying this morning. Evening, Evening. yeah, it's dark now. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm behind, yeah. What we're going to do, we're just, um, we'll just play um, some music. We're going to sort of move around a little bit. Obviously, you can see we're going to put that camera on. So we can kind of see down in and um, yeah, we're just going to gather everyone and we're going to baptize people in the same order uh, that we did that. Andy, you're right to do the, the mic thing. Okay, yeah. Okay, so with each person, I'm just going to ask them a question and um, then we baptize, nice and quiet, in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we're just going to pray for them afterwards as well. All right, we might sing a chorus together. So, so yeah, Anna. Uh, do you believe that Jesus died for your sins and that he rose again and has power to forgive? I do. Well, because of the profession of your faith, we baptise you now in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> To follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning.
Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, Ellie. I just want to pray for you first, actually. Lord, I just pray for Ellie. Just pray for her, just for blessing in her life. Fresh blessing from today forwards, in Jesus' name, for her and her family. Ellie, do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe that he is the one who can connect you to the Father in heaven? Amen. Well, because of your faith in Jesus, because you want to follow him, we baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before. Okay, Tristan, do you believe that Jesus is your saviour, that he died for you and that he rose again victorious? I do. (laughs) But because of the confession of your faith, we baptise you now in the name of the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for Luai. Thank you for him, Lord. Thank you the plans you have for him. They're to prosper him, not to harm him. Plans to give him a hope and a future. We pray that you would be strong and courageous. Just step forward a little bit. Yeah. Luai, do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe he's your saviour? Do you believe he wants to know you and that he died for you? Yeah. Amen. We baptise you, therefore, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Woo! <laughs> I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me, no believe in Jesus? Do you believe he died for you? He rose again and he sent his Holy Spirit to help you? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
Well, because of the profession of your faith, we baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning Anita, do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe he's the way, the truth, and the life? That no one comes to the Father except through him. Amen. But because you believe in Jesus, because you want to follow him, we baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, we, we don't believe in many traditions uh, here at Life Community Church, but one that we seem to have is that we say this, that there's water here, and if there's anyone here who believes in Jesus, like you've believed in him for a while, you believe that he is the way to the Father, that he's the God's only Son sent to this earth so that we can be forgiven, so that we can have new life in Him. But you haven't been baptised yet. There is an opportunity for you today. So what we're going to do, we're going to sing that chorus a couple of more times, all right? If there's anyone here, I would say age-wise you're in kind of double figures, okay? And you believe that Jesus is your Saviour, but you've never been baptised then come down here and let us know. We're going to sing this a couple more times. It's just an opportunity because there isn't always the opportunity to be baptised. You know, in the Bible, when they said we're going to be baptised, they did it like immediately. There's a story of, uh, of this guy chatting to someone, this guy called Philip, chatting to a guy from Ethiopia. And he explained the gospel. The guy got it. And they said, look, some water over there. Why shouldn't I be baptised? And he was baptised. So if you believe in Jesus, you believe he's the way, the truth and the life, but you haven't yet been baptised, we're going to sing this a couple of times. Just come over here let us, uh, let us know who you are. We'll have a quick chat with you. We'll see if there's anyone else. Finish there, but is anyone here and you have been listening this, uh, this evening and something's spoken to you, don't don't just kind of take it to yourself. Don't hold on to it. Talk to someone. Talk to someone you know who's a Christian. If you've got loads of questions, ask someone. Ask someone who's walked that journey of finding Jesus. If that's you, if you've, uh, if you've got those questions, then please come and speak to me. Come and speak to someone else. We're going to finish there. And what we're going to actually do, we're going to clear three, maybe four rows of chairs over here. And we're going to put tables out down here and cakes will appear. Okay, so I just want to pray for everyone. So nice and quiet and we'll just pray as we finish. Lord, thank you. 
thank you that you're the God who reaches out to us. Thank you, God, that you sent Jesus into this world. It says the world, uh, the, the word, that's Jesus, became flesh. He became flesh. He moved into the neighborhood. He became one of us to show us the way to go. And he died for us to make a way for us to be with God, to be with the Father in heaven. Thank you for those words of truth, Lord. I pray that each person here would know that. They would know that you love them. That you would, they would know that you died for them so that they can be free. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.